Hey, 231 students. So we're going to introduce you to your first sorting algorithm in this video. But first, I want to pose to you the question, how would you sort a list? Okay, so this is a brain exercise. Uh, given the following Python list, devise an algorithm to sort it. Now, you can't use the built-in sorting methods we talked about last time, but think about it, right? Um, it's, it's a good exercise. If I gave you this list and I said, here's a quiz, I want you to sort the list, uh, how would you do it? Um, you're gonna need to either have a loop or use recursion, uh, either one will be fine, but you are gonna have to loop over this, maybe more than one time. So I encourage you, take a few minutes and just think about how would you do this, okay? And I'll pause here for a minute and I would like you to pause and think about this. How could you possibly do this, okay? So, hopefully you've taken a minute to think about it. Uh, your answer may be something that looks like one of the next two sorts we are going to study, uh, which is bubble sort. Okay, so bubble sort is, well, frankly, it's not a terribly uh, practical sorting algorithm because there's lots of ways to do it better, but it's uh, often taught as maybe one of the easiest to understand. Okay, so the way that bubble sort works is it makes, first of all, it has to go through the list multiple times, and most sorts do. They're gonna have to go through the list many times, so you're gonna have like a nested loop, probably. Um, yuck. But the idea, the intuition of bubble sort is that on each pass through the list, you are going to compare adjacent items and exchange items that are out of their natural ordering, okay? so. The effect is that each time you go through the bubble, the list, and again, you're gonna to have to go through multiple times, you're gonna place the next largest value where it should be, okay? So you, this is where bubble sort gets its name. Each pass through the list, on the first pass, you bubble up the largest element to its final spot. And then in the second pass through bubble sort, you bubble up the second highest value to its final spot, right? And those spots are gonna be at the end of the list. Okay. Bubble sort is a stable sort. And so that means that if you've got two items in the list in the same order, we'll, we'll show you an example in a minute, they're gonna maintain their order in the list, okay? Um, I'll show you an example of what that means um, in, in our worksheet. but. Uh, at least I think I am. But basically, right, if you had, if, if you imagine that you've got a pile, a big uh, list of, say, coins in front of you, you've got pennies and nickels and quarters, right? Um, what else? Dimes, 50 cent pieces, doesn't really matter. Those things have an ordering by their v monetary value. So imagine that they're all laid out in a row. Get out some coins if you have them. Lay them out in a row. Stable sort means that Let's say you've got two quarters in your list and you're sorting the whole list. Those two quarters, when the sort finishes, will be in the same order that they are on the table in front of you. Right? So when you start out, the quarters may have pennies and nickels and dimes in between them. But when the sort finishes, quarter number one will be first in the sorted list and followed by quarter number two. And then if there was quarter number three, quarter number four, that's what it means to be stable. The ordering is preserved for equal values, okay? And that can be important for things like priority queues. So say you've got people in a hospital and some of them are patients who are designated as critical, right? Well, you wanna see the critical pace patients before the ones who are in normal condition or not unhealthy, whatever, but within those critical groups of people, you wanna see them in the order they arrived. That's effectively what a stable sort means. People with equal value main, are in the same order that they were in the list. Not all sorts are stable sorts, okay? So bubble sort, what does it do? Let's visualize it just very quickly. And I'm gonna get rid of myself um, because I'll block some of the code. So here's a list. What does bubble sort do? So we're gonna start, it starts um, here at index zero of our list. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare this item 
and bubble it up. We're going to move it up, up, up until we find something bigger. And remember, our end goal, after we go through this list one time, is that the biggest item in the list is in its final spot. So just glancing at this, you can see, well, 84 is the biggest item. Our end state, our end goal for the first pass through this list is going to be to have 84 over here. Now, we can see this, but of course the computer, is an, when the algorithm is running, it doesn't know the state of the list. It has to loop through to figure these things out. Okay, so what does bubble sort do? We start with 67 and we compare 67 to 33. And we're comparing adjacent items. And it asks the question, is 33 less than 67? Well, yes. So we're going to bubble 67 up a slot. Right? So we swap these two elements. We bubble 67 up. And then we ask, is 21 less than 67? Why, well, yes, it is. Okay, so we bubble up 67, another slot, and you know and that means we swap these two. Is 67 less than eight, or excuse me, is 84 less than 67? No, it is not. So on this comparison, we're still doing a comparison, but we do not have any movements here, right? So the efficiency of our algorithms in sorting, we care about the comparisons and the moves, okay? There's gonna be no move here, right? All right, now we're looking at 84. So we've gone slot zero, slot one, slot two, slot three. Okay, so we ask, is the thing in slot four less than the thing in slot three? The answer is yes. So we bubble up 84 again. And then finally, is the thing in slot number five, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, this thing in slot five less than the thing in slot for the answer is yes, right? So we bubble it up. All right, so this is one pass through the sorting algorithm. So we had to go through all the whole list, and after doing it, we know that the item that is in this final slot is the biggest one, right? Now we need to go through this list one, two, three, four more times to kind of bubble up the next biggest things, okay? so. After the first pass, the largest element has bubbled up, let me turn myself back on here, to the end of the list. And then for each pass, we will put the next largest number in its place. Right? Um, some of the other elements may bubble up as well. If you remember, 67 started out here and it bubbled up part way. Right? And then it encountered 84 and 84 bubbled up. So after we've done this n minus one times, where n is the number of items in the list, the list will be sorted. Okay, um, I have some links here to some visualizations. I'm going to pull one of them over here so you can see it. Uh, this is the, the second one here, uh, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty intuitive. I encourage you to look at it. Um, the code over here is written in Java, so don't worry about that. You don't have to concern yourself. There's a bubble sort handout. We're going to go through the algorithm in detail. Um, in the second part of this video, but I want you to just kind of look at this until you get a good feel for what's going on. You know, don't pay attention to the code, pay attention to this part over here. You can control the speed of what's going on. Um, let me restart it and play it. You can actually see, let me pause, restart, pause, right? It starts out by comparing nine here to 86. Well, nine is less than 86, so it doesn't move it. Um, and then 86 is getting compared to each thing, and 86 starts bubbling up, right? And again, every time we're asking the question, is the item in slot J plus one less than the item in J, right? It keeps bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. Turns out 86 is the biggest element of this list, so it's gonna bubble all the way up to the top. And then we start over, okay? So now we're kind of, as you can see, things are starting to bubble up. Again, we're always looking for, we're doing comparisons. Like, is the thing in slot J less than the thing, or excuse me, is the thing in slot J plus one less than the thing in slot J, right? So here's bubble sort, it keeps bubbling up. Things start to kind of get into an order here as well, right, to the left-hand side. All right, so kind of watch this, try and understand what's going on. Second part of the video, we're going to turn to the worksheet and really get into the algorithm. Hello, everybody. 
So this is the second part of the bubble sort uh, video. This one we're going to walk through the worksheet that I've posted online. So I've also posted the solutions, but you know, as good students, you should make a good, honest effort uh, at these worksheets first. Um, the worksheets are designed to first answer a couple of questions about the sorting algorithm, like how efficient is it, what it's good at or bad at, but also to show you the algorithms in detail. Okay, so we're going to start out with bubble sort, um, which I introduced in the first part of the video. So uh, on the screen down here, you can see the uh, algorithm for bubble sort is pasted here. Now this is in pseudocode. Um, it's not actual Python code. If you want to translate this into Python, hopefully there's enough information here. So we'll step through this. I've got hopefully some English language description over here of what each line is doing. But let's just start it. Let's try and do it, and maybe that's the best way to kind of explain how all this stuff works, okay? So I've got a list here. I've got a list A um, that I want to sort. And let me make sure I'm ready to draw. Looks good. I've got a list here that I want to sort. As you can see, it's a list of numbers. Numbers have a natural ordering. We know what less than means in number world. So we have the ability to sort this list. First thing I'm going to observe, though, is how many items are in the list. What is my n? What is the size of the input? Well, I count uh, that there are six items in this list. So I'll write down n equals six here. All right, so now let's trace the algorithm, right? So the algorithm starts out, as you can see, we've got two for loops here. We've got nested for loops, and that should give you a hint as to the algorithmic time complexity of this uh, or the big O of this algorithm. But anyway, let's just trace it. Let's do what the algorithm says. Four passes remaining. So passes remaining is a variable. Goes from n minus one down to one. Okay, well, when we start out, n minus one to one. So we're looping backwards. We're kind of counting backwards here. We start out, n is equal to six. So passes remaining here in our first go through is going to start out at 5. Pat n minus 1 is 5. All right, so now our inner loop passes remaining as our control variable for the outer loop. Our inner loop is the part that bubbles each time. It's going to bubble the biggest item up. Uh, that's its job. All right, so for j equals 0, j gets 0, to passes remaining minus 1. Okay, so passes remaining minus one. But we start out with j equals zero. Okay, if a sub j plus one is less than a sub j, we're going to swap them. Okay, so j is zero. So we're looking at this element right here, right? We're looking at number 12. Is j plus one, okay, so j is here right now, right? slot zero is j plus one this guy right slot one less than a sub j why yes it is right a sub j so then we need to swap them okay so i'm going to write down that we have swapped these two elements right and i'm going to make a note over here yeah we swapped them okay it'll be useful for us later uh, and we did one comparison here, right? We, we also did a comparison on this line, all right? Now, uh, the remainder of this list remains unchanged at this point, right? We're just, we're, we're doing one pass, one iteration through this inner loop. Nothing in the rest of this list has changed yet, okay? So, We've com completed one pass through the inner loop. Now J will go on. For J is starts at zero and goes up to passes remaining minus one. So now J is going to be one. Um, so we've moved our pointer and now we're looking here. Okay. So we're not going to touch six. Six is still there. J is one. Is J plus one less than J? A sub J. Well, no. Twenty-two is not less than twelve. So, no change is made, okay? The list remains the same. There is no swap here. We did do a comparison. We compared 12 and 22, but no swap in this one. All right, so now we move on. J is two, all right? J is now here, 
right? Hit slot two. Okay, so these guys were we're past them already, and we're looking at slot two is slot j plus one. 14 less than slot J. Why, yes, it is. So we got to swap. Okay, so we've swapped these two values. We have performed a swap. I'm going to mark that. We have performed a comparison. And these guys, we haven't gotten to them yet. All right, so now what do we do? J goes up again according to our algorithm. So now J is here. Okay. All right, j is here, so is a sub j plus one, which is eight, less than a sub j, why yes it is. Swap these two around. Okay, so we're only dealing with adjacent pairs, whoops, excuse me. We're only dealing with adjacent pairs. Uh, we did do a swap here and we did a comparison. Okay, so finally, last iteration. Again, this is the iteration of the inner loop. For j gets 0 up through passes remaining minus 1. Well, passes remaining has been 5 this whole time. All right, so this is going to be the last iteration, passes remaining minus 1. Um, and we're comparing 4 and 5 here, right? So I'm going to stop, you know, filling in all these things that we're not changing. Um, is 22 less, or 17 less than 22? Yes, it is. So we swap them. There is a swap and there's a comparison. Okay, so take back what I just said. I will fill them in. Um, this is the state of A. This is what A looks like after the first complete uh, set of iterations for the inner loop. Okay, so the outer loop has completed one pass. This is the current state of our list. And during this pass, we did one, two, three, four swaps. We did four swaps and we did five comparisons. Okay, so let's uh, continue to fill out this table. All right, so what do we do now? We've completed one part pass of the outer loop. So for passes remaining, it's n minus one down to one. So this passes remaining variable is decrementing. We're counting backward. So we're going to go, I'm going to get my mouse back here. All right. So now passes remaining goes to four. Uh, my uh, my tablet does not like when my hand, side of my hand touches it. Very hard to write in that case, isn't it? Oh no. <laughs> now what have I done? I think I've moved all sorts of things inadvertently. Let me try and get this back. Hopefully that's okay now. Holy cow, what a pain. All right. So J is now, uh, J starts over again. So we're on the inner loop again. For J equals zero to passes remaining minus one. So now we start at zero again. Okay, so we're here. Uh, let me erase these guys. I'm gonna move slightly more quickly now, okay? So is six less than 12? Or is 12 less than six? No, so there's no movement on this row, okay? 6, 12, 14, 8, 17, and 22, right? So I've shaded out 22 here. 22, we're not going to move it anymore. It's frozen. Remember, each pass of the outer loop in the bubble sort bubbles the biggest item to the top, whatever that may be. So 22 is there. It is set, okay? Um, in this first iteration, we did not uh, do, <laughs> we did not do a swap. We did not do a swap. Let's try it. Let's be careful. Okay. We did not do a swap. We did do a comparison, though. All right. All right. So now we're on iteration number or where j equals 1. So we're looking at j and j plus 1. So 14 and 12. Is 14 less than 12? No, it's not. So once again, you know, we don't move anything. Um, all right, so there there has been, whoops, there has been no swap here. We have done a comparison though. All right, let's keep it up. 
j is 2. All right, so now we're looking at slot 2 and slot 3. Right? Is 8 less than 14? Why, yes, it is. So 14 is bubbling up, right? We've bubbled up 14 here. So we did this swap. The rest of the elements are currently unchanged, right? We're only looking at j and j plus 1. Okay. And we did do a swap here. We also did a comparison. All right, finally, passes remaining for j gets 0 to passes remaining minus 1. Here we are. We're at 3 now. Um, and we're looking at this and 4, all right? Is j plus 1 17 less than j? 14, no, okay? So what has happened? We haven't, we haven't done a swap. We've done another comparison, though. But look at where we've arrived. 17, holy cow, doesn't like me today. 17 is in the next highest slot. Well, what's the next highest value in this list that's remaining? Uh, well, yeah, it's 17, right? So after the second pass of the outer loop, 17, uh, the next biggest item in the list is in its final resting place. And there it's going to stay. So we did four comparisons this time and only one swap. All right. Well, let's do our algorithm. You know, let's finish this out. Okay, we're, we're getting close here. So pass, <laughs> passes remaining. I apologize. It's more frustrating for me. Goes down to three. We start J over at zero. Okay. Is 6 less than 12, or 12 less than 6? No. Okay. So we've done no swap. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to write an angry letter to Microsoft. Do you think that they will care about that? I totally blame this on OneNote. Um, let's see. Can I hold my pen a different way? if I do it this way. All right. Um, so we haven't moved anything. J goes up to one here. Okay. So we're looking at this slot. All right. Is J plus one slot two l less than slot J? Why, yes, it is. Eight is less than 12. So these items do get swapped around. I did do a comparison and the rest of the items remain the same. 14, Okay. All right. Finally, uh, J goes up to two, right? So we're looking at two and three is slot J plus one slot three less than 12. No. So there's no movement here. Okay. Um, this is 17. No movement. We did do a comparison. So here again, we've got three comparisons in one swap. All right, well, we're almost done. Now, you may be observing here, if you're observant and you're understanding what's going on, the list is actually sorted at this point, right? But unfortunately, uh, our bubble sort is not that smart. Um, so it's going to keep going. It doesn't know that things are sorted, so it keeps following its algorithm. Passes remaining goes down to two. J starts over again at zero. Okay, so we're comparing slot zero to slot number one. Okay, slot zero to slot number one. Okay, eight is not less than six, so we don't do a swap. All right, so there was no swap. There was a comparison. The remaining items stay where they are. Okay. J goes up to one. All right, so we're comparing slot one and slot two. Uh, slot one is slot two, 12 less than eight. Nope, sure isn't. Okay, so no, no swaps again. Ah, kill me here. So no swaps, but we did do two comparisons. All right, finally, we're, we're almost to the end. Thank goodness, right? Uh, this is an n squared algorithm, and you feel every bit of pain while trying to do it, right? Um, finally, passes remaining goes down to one, right? And if we scroll up, I'm, I'm scared to scroll anymore. 
Uh, if we scroll up, we see that passes remaining goes from n minus 1 down to 1. So this is the last iteration of our outer loop. All right. So um, j starts at 0. And then finally, we got to wrap this up. And we say, <laughs> we say, this is awful. Uh, we say, all right, um, j is 0. And j plus 1. Is j plus 1 8 less than 6? Well, no, of course not. So we're, we stop. <laughs> Send help, please. All right. Well, Microsoft hates me. And I hate them. Feeling is mutual. <laughs> can't even write. I can't write without putting my hand down. But when I put my hand down, it scrolls. All right. So... Uh, this is the last iteration of our algorithm. We did not do any swaps here, but we did do one comparison. All right, so let's kind of tally everything that we've done here. Now our list is sorted, right? We've got 6, 8, 12, 14, 17, and 22. All right, how many swaps did we do total. Well, it kind of depends. Maybe you've gathered. Um, the number of comparisons, let's talk about that first. The number of comparisons depends on how big the list is. So we've got 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Sum all that up. That's 15, right? We did 15 comparisons total. And how many swaps did we do? Well, we did four initially. So we bubbled a lot in that first pass. And then one swap, one swap. So six total. Right. So the, the number of swaps you do, maybe you kind of picked up on, it depends on the initial arrangement of this list. If we tried to do bubble sort on a list that was already sorted, we wouldn't swap anything. Right. Uh, so um, the number of swaps depends on kind of the initial arrangement of the list, whereas the number of comparisons depends on the size of the list, not its arrangement. All right. So let's scroll down. We've got a few questions to answer here. So in general, how many comparisons are needed for, are made for a list of length n? Well, you can kind of factor it around, um, but the, the correct answer is, the correct answer is to stop using one. The correct answer is n okay, times n minus 1 over 2. Right. So we had how many items? We had, did we have five or six items in that list? We had six items in that list. So 6 times 5 is 30, divided by 2 is 15, 15 comparisons. Okay. What is the big O of bubble sort? Okay, well, look at this. This is the worst case uh, complexity here. Um, well, that to me, we've got n times n. You've definitely got an n squared algorithm here. Can you perform bubble sort on a Python list, on a linked list? Well, yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, looks basically the same for either version. So yes, yes, of course you can. We're studying sorting of the data structures we already have. Uh, we've only talked really about three data structures. We've talked about a lot of data types and abstract data types, but we've only talked about three data structures, the array-based list, the linked list, and the hash table. Hash tables can't be sorted. Uh, they can, but we're not gonna go there, right? You would use totally different algorithm than this. Um, Linked list and array-based list, yes, you can both sort them with bubble sort. Here's a thought uh, experiment. What initial state of the list of A would require the most swaps? Okay, so think about that for a second. The answer is, if you got a list that was already in reverse order, so for some reason, the list came in sorted backward and you tried to sort it with bubble sort, you would be doing a lot of swaps, right? It would not be good. Um, you would be doing n squared swaps on top of n squared comparisons, um, or not n squared exactly, but this value. So this would be bad news, right? If we had to sort just reverse order things all the time, um, maybe a smarter approach would be just loop over the thing backward uh, in that case. Uh, final question, how can we short circuit bubble sort to detect if the list becomes sorted be going through all, before going through all the passes? 
Well, the answer here, let's observe. At this, on the outer loop here, right, when we went through pass two, we did no swaps, right? And that's because at the end of pass number three, our list was sorted at the end of pass number three of the outer loop. So what we can say is, you know, hey, if we go through a pass of the outer loop without doing a swap, if you haven't swapped anything, it must be sorted, okay? pass of the outer loop. So how can we short circuit bubble sort to detect if the list is sorted before going through all the passes? The answer is um, the list is sorted if no swaps are performed on a pass. Okay, so what would you do with this? Um, you know, you can use a Boolean, right? Figure out, oh my goodness, use a Boolean to figure out, hey, have I done any swaps in this pass of the outer loop? And then when you come back to your outer loop, you know, it loops around again, you check that Boolean, and if it's like, hey, false, I didn't swap anything, you're done, return, exit out of there. All right, so there's another table here. I encourage you to, to work through it. Try and concretize the basics of how this algorithm works. Okay, get it kind of in your head what it's doing. Next time we'll look at a sort that operates in a totally different way and maybe a more natural way as well. All right, see you then.